Welcome to the short overview of the NSAFE 1.1 release. In this overview I'll be um, explaining some of the new features that have been uh, introduced with this release. The first thing I would like to show you is the evacuation percentage. Um, and this um, is available when you have a vector um, polygon flood hazard and a raster um, exposure layer like population. Um, and you'll see that when you run the analysis you now got a new option to ex uh, specify in a, an evacuation percentage. When the report is generated that the threshold that you set in the um, evacuation impact function, uh, in the flood impact function um, is used to determine the people, number of people needing evacuation. The next thing that we can show you is that we've got a new warning infrastructure for um, dealing with um, cases where you've got very large data sets and they might use more than uh, the available RAM that you have when you do the analysis. So in this case I'm working in um, um, Padang and I'm, I've got some population data and some um, quake shake map data and I'm going to zoom out a little bit and the population data I have is very high resolution um, and you'll see that if I zoom out too far in on the map um, this warning is produced which says that based on our calculations you you may run out of memory while you run the analysis um, it's just a warning you can carry on and run the analysis anyway if you do you'll get um, this prompt it says um, basically the same thing if you if you run the analysis you may run out of memory um, but it allows you to carry on regardless. And this is to prevent situations where people um, uh, 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 run very large analysis without realizing it and then the computer becomes unstable. Uh, the next new thing that we've added is an opt-in feature um, which allows you to send debug information to our debug server and um, uh, you have to enable it manually in the options dialog here. Um, it's off by default, so you won't send any personal information without explicitly choosing to do so. And when you do enable that option, um, any warnings that get created um, during your use of InnerSafe will get posted to this website where we can analyze them in aggregate. So we can see the number of times that warning has occurred and then we can actually drill into a specific warning and see on which computers it has occurred, um, how frequently it's occurred and the exact details of what the exception was even down to the line of code um, where the exception occurred. The next new thing that we've um, got as part of 1.1 is um, this the real-time quake map production uh, which I'm going to show you over here. So this is all built using QGIS and the InnerSafe libraries and it's available at this website as, as well as on the BMPB website and basically it's a system to produce uh, a report automatically whenever a quake gets generated. Uh, when a quake occurs, sorry, the report gets generated within a few minutes after the event. In this case, it was generated 13 minutes after the event, and it pr provides uh, an estimate of the number of people that would have been affected by the event. Um, and the last thing to mention with this release is the new repository that we've got. Um, the repository is a QGIS plugin, Python plugin repository, and what it allows you to do is to um, use preview builds of the next release. As it's as we're working on it, we'll probably make weekly snapshots of the um, the future work that we're planning on. And if you enable this new repository, um, you'll be able to use the bleeding edge version of InnerSafe um, within QGIS without having to um, know anything about coding or anything like that. So this is available at um, this web uh, site over here. You simply add a new repository using the repository manager. You fill in the details as per this dialog. And then um, when you when you next do your plugin updates, you'll see um, the experimental build available from the repository, which you can then just click on and install in the plugins list here. So for example there and you can just say upgrade or install as the case may be. And that's a way for people to um, get a 
preview if they want to see the new features that are coming into the next release. Well, that's all I have to show you today. Thank you very much for watching, and we hope you enjoy um, using the new release of InnerSafe 1.1. As always, you can visit our website at innersafe.org for more information, documentation and links on how to join our community.